before I comment, or rather before we comment, the business of today, please request children to get pregnant. To allow me to take this meeting when I sit on the chair. Agree? Yeah, agree. Agree. Thank you very much. At 70, I didn't know you. That, that's why I'm chairman. The chairman should sit on the chair. <laughs> don't, don't ask me where you should sit. <laughs> <laughs> My effort supporting the machine of the distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It gives me very great pleasure to welcome you to the 74th annual general meeting eight years of our dear campaign. A meeting which has been duly convened and properly constituted. I sincerely hope that you all and your respective families are staying safe Healthy in this extremely difficult time. It is very difficult indeed. And may the good Lord continue to be our guide and God. Shall we take you the mind today? Try and observe a moment of silence for the poor and the that they are colleagues in Nigeria and all over the world who have for him as COVID-19 victims. <laughs> May their soul continue to rest in perfect peace. <laughs> in view of the COVID 19 pandemic and the attendant directives issued by the relevant authorities on fiscal distancing and a limit on the maximum number of persons at the gathering, no more than 20 persons. This AGM is being held by proxy in full compliance and in accordance with the Corporate Affairs Commission's guidelines on holding of annual general meeting of public companies using progress. Here in after, referred to as CAC guidelines. May I call on our registrar, First Registrars and Investor Services Limited, represented here today by the Managing Director CEO, Mr. Bayo would look with me to quickly inform us of the number of proxy forms received for this year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the closure of um, time limit to receive proxies, as 48 hours before this AGM, we received a total of 226 proxies representing shareholding of 5 billion, H27 million, 391,427 units. The share capital of the company, the issue share capital is 7 billion. 
9,996,902,049 units. Percentage of total proxies holdings received is 72.9%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a unique AGM in view of current realities, as it is also been streamed live to shareholders and other relevant stakeholders who are unable to be physically part of this. I would like to thank our shareholders in attendance physically here today and all those who have joined this meeting virtually for their continued commitment to the growth of our company. May I use this opportunity to appreciate our regulators for taking proactive measures in ensuring that public companies can convene and conduct their AGM in these difficult circumstances. Please be informed that microphones and amplifying equipment have been used for a clear recording and broadcast of the proceedings. I would therefore request our members to speak clearly into the microphone whenever you make a point and second the motion. We have a full agenda, and it, is, and it might be helpful to explain that you will have the opportunity to second each motion put to this meeting. There will be an opportunity for questions to be taken on that particular motion, but only before the vote on it is taken. Please be informed that the Register of Directors Holdings is available for inspection during meet the meeting in accordance with Section 275, Subsection 8 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act Cap 2C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 hearing after referred to as CAMA. Information in that regard is further contained in item 14, page 24 of the annual report. And I can take it from where the register has it. Thank you. Also, in accordance with section 25A, subsection 2 of CAMA, the record of directors' attendance at board meetings. It's available for inspection at this meeting. The information is further contained in item 21A on page 24, 26 of the annual report. I will now introduce the directors physically present at this meeting. To my immediate right, is Mr. Jody Borubel, who is a Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer. is also one of the proxies for this meeting. On the front row to my right is Mrs. Ndidi Nwunele, a member of the Federal Republic, who is an independent non-executive director, and also a proxy for the Senate. Thank you very much. I am Chief Kornlai Jamadu, the commander of the Federal Republic. I am your non-executive Thank you. 
to my left is our boy, our company secretary. Web boy has been working day and night. I'm not sure he's had four hours to live the last the, the last one week. <laughs> that will give me a round of applause again. The other directors of the company who we will be joining us virtually. Uh, Mrs. Adeyinka Aroyeu, an independent non executive director. <laughs> Mr. Olushe Ibika said, a non executive director. Mr. C. Pimsra, a non-executive director. <laughs> Mr. Rob Plejan, finance director, is the chancellor of the Ethica. <laughs> Mrs. Ifueko Omoguyo Karu, a member of the Federal Republic, <laughs> an independent non-executive director. Mr. Roland Primet, a non-executive director. He doubles as the Heineken Regional President for Africa, Middle East, and Eastern Europe. I will now introduce the directors. Mr. Stephen Sime is the non-executive director. He will be joining us. For more on the profile of each of the board members, you can please Turn to pages 10 and 11 of the annual report and accounts where further details have been given about them. Audit Committee. The chairman of the Audit Committee and the shareholder representative on the Audit Committee, Chief Timothy Ayobami Adeshiyo, is also here, representing other members of the committee and is also one of the proxies for this meeting. Independent other auditor, the firm of Deloy and Touch acted as an independent auditor. The firm is hereby represented by Mr. Michael Oshiloye, who is a member in the firm. Other officers. We also have in our midst the representatives of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Gostein Winekai. is here to observe the proceeding. The Corporate Affairs Commission and the Securities Exchange Commission informed us that they will be observing the proceedings via the live broadcast. We have already seen Mr. Bayo Lubimi, the main director, CEO of Force Registrars and Investor Services Limited. The other proxies appointed for this meeting are Sir Sonny Ngosu, <laughs> Mr. Matthew Akinlade, <laughs> Mr. Nona Awo, <laughs> Mrs. Adebimpe Chuewu. <laughs> yeah, been appointed to represent the minority interest. Mrs. Shadi Morgan is a Corporate Affairs Director. 
and Ms. Haliman Afebua is the compliance manager. They are the officers for this meeting, just to keep us in check, to ensure that we are fully in compliance. Kindly be informed that the chairman's address is on pages 17 to 20 of the annual report and account. With your kind permission, do we take it as read? Thank you very much. I now call on the company secretary to read the notice of meeting convening this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, distinguished shareholders. This is the notice convening this meeting, and I read. It is on page 15 of the annual report and account. Notice is hereby given at the 74th annual general meeting of Nigerian Brewers PLC, the company will be held in the Star Academy NBS Accommodation Center, Plot 14, Abebe Village Road, Igomu, Lagos State, Nigeria. Today, Thursday, the 23rd of June, 2020, at 10 a.m. for the following purposes. Ordinary business. One, to lay before the meeting the report of the directors and the statement of financial position as of the 1st December 2019, together with the income statement for the year ended on that date, and the report of the independent auditor and the audit committee thereof. Number two, to declare a dividend. Number three, to re-elect re directors, including Chief Kalaole B. Jamodu, who is over 70 years old, Special notice to that effect, having been received by the company in accordance with Section 256 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Cap C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. Item number four, to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the independent auditor. Item number five, to re-elect members of the audit committee. Item number six, which is a special business, to fix the remuneration of the directors. The notice of meeting is dated the 20th day of May 2020, and by the order of the board, it is signed by me, your humble company secretary, Oaboy G. Akwebak. There are notes accompanying the notice dealing with proxies, Audit committee members, dividend and closure of register, shareholders' rights to ask questions, electronic version of the annual report and account be made available, live streaming of the AGM, which is ongoing as we speak, e dividend mandate, and unclaimed dividend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much indeed. Item one on the agenda is to lay before the meeting the report of the directors and the statement of financial position as of 31st December 2019, together with the income statement for the year ended on that date, and the report of the independent auditor and the audit committee thereof. I lay before you the director's report and the financial statement of financial position as at 1st December 2019 together with the income statement for the year ended on that date, 
and the report of the independent auditor and the audit committee thereof. Before we take questions or comments on the report and account, I will call on the independent auditor and the odd committee to present their respective report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, distinguished board members, distinguished shareholders. Permit me to stand on existing uh, protocol. Distinguished shareholders, may I crave your indulgence to save our time to read the first two paragraphs of the opinion and the last paragraph. The independent auditor's reports are on page 48 to page 52. Then I read, independent auditor's opinion. To the shareholders of Nigerian Bureau's TLC, report on the audit of the financial statement. Opinion. We have audited the accompanying consolidated and separate financial statement of Nigerian Bureau's PLC, the company, and its subsidiaries, together referred to as the group, which comprise the consolidated and separate statement of financial position as at 31 December 2019, the consolidated and separate statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, the statement of changes in equity, and the consolidated statement of cash flows for the year then ended. And the notes to the consolidated and separate financial statement, including a summary of significant accounting policy. In our opinion, the consolidated and separate financial statement give a true and fair view of the consolidated and separate financial position of Nigerian Bureau's PLC as of 31 December 2019. And its consolidated and separate financial performance and cash flow for the year then ended in accordance with the International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS, the Companies and Allied Matter Act of C20 Law of Federation of Nigeria of 2004, and the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria Act of 2011. Basis for our opinion. We conducted our audit in accordance with the International Standard on Auditing, that's ISAS. Our responsibility under those standards are further described in auditor's responsibility for the audit of the financial statement section of our report. We are independent of the group and company in accordance with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigerian Professional Code of Conduct and Guide for Accountants. And all our independence requirements applicable to performing audit of financial statements in Nigeria. We have fulfilled our other ethical requirements applicable to performing audits in Nigeria. The ICANN code is consistent with the International Ethics Standard Board of Accountants Code of Ethics and Professional Accountants, both Part A and B. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained and gathered is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Then I will now move to the last page, which is page 52, to read the last paragraph of the report. Report on other legal and re regulatory requirements. In accordance with the schedule of Companies and Allied Matter Act, Part 20 Law of Regulation of Nigeria of 2004, we expressly state as follows. One, we have obtained all the information and explanation which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purpose of our audit. Two, the group and companies has kept proper books of account so far as appear from the examination of those books. Three, the groups, are, the groups and company financial position and a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income and in agreement with those books of account and return. Signed by my humble self, for and on behalf of Deloitte and Tush, Chartered Accountant, Lagos, Nigeria, dated 13 February, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
in accordance with the provisions of KAMA, members of the audit committee met in the course of the year to, amongst others, examine the report of the independent auditor and the chairman of the committee is here with us today to present their report. And now, call on Chief Timothy Ayobamiya Deshiyo to present the committee's report. Good morning. The chairman, distinguished board members of Nigerian Buildings PLC, Regulatory Authority representatives present, press and fellow shareholders, both present here and at home due to COVID pandemic, which has limited our attendance to this. I hereby refer you to page 46 of this annual report. Page 46 contains the report of the audit committee, and I read as follows. To the members of Nigerian Buildings PLC, in accordance with the provisions of section 359, subsection 6 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Cap C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. The members of the Audit Committee of Nigeria Bureau's PLC, having carried out our statutory functions under the Act, hereby report that A, the accounting and reporting policies of the company are in accordance with legal requirements and agreed ethical practices. B, the scope and planning of, the, of both the external and internal audit for the year ended at 1st December 2019 are satisfactory. The internal audit programs reinforce the company's internal control, the internal control system. And C, having reviewed the independent auditors memorandum of recommendations on accounting procedures and internal controls, we are satisfied with management responses thereon. Finally, we acknowledge the cooperation of management and staff in the conduct of our duties. Members of the audit committee are one, Chief Timothy A. Addition, that's myself, Shareholders Representative, Chairman. Two, Mazi Samuel C. Mpamungo, Shareholders Representative, Member. Three, Mr. David O. Ogutoye, Shareholders Representative, Member. Four, Mr. Olusei T. Bikestef, Director's Representative, Member. Five, Mrs. Ifueko M. Omegui Okauru, MFR, Director's Representative, Member. And six, Mr. Stephen M. Siema, Director's Representative, also a member. Seven, Mr. Roland Pimes, Director's Representative Member. The company secretary served as the secretary to the committee, signed by me, Timothy, Chief Timothy Adichino, on the 12th day of February 2020. Mrs. Bickerstead and Siema we are elected as members of the committee on the 27th of May, 2019. Mr. Himes ceased to be 
a member of the committee as from that day. Thank you. Thank you for the job very well done. And thank you for looking after the interests of the shareholders and making sure that we continue in full compliance. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Just a few points to draw your attention to before we continue the business of the day. Earlier, we've taken the chairman's address as read. But I just wanted to draw your attention to some salient points, particularly the environment in which we operated during the year 2019, which, if I was not materially different from what we saw during 2018, it was, in fact, another challenging year for businesses in general. In addition to the slump, In the crude oil price in 2018, we witnessed another big challenge, COVID-19, towards the tail end of year 2019, and which unfortunately has progressively grown into the year 2020 and has in fact become another global pandemic. In spite of all these challenges, Nigerian bureaus were able to achieve the top line of 323 billion compared to 324 which is a decline of 0.4%. The profit before tax, however, declined by 17% from 19.4 to 16.1. Those are some of the highlights there. I do hope that you will give kudos to the management and staff at all levels for this acceptable performance in the midst of all these conflicting challenges. On behalf of the board, management and staff at all levels, I'm sure you all join me in expressing our appreciation to our customers who, in spite of these problems, have stood by the company to achieve this result. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will give kudos to management loud and clear, especially when we consider these results in the light of present circumstances, the circumstances which include high input costs, high rate of inflation, continuous down trading, and yet because of customers spent pressure, selling prices have been maintained at fairly constant level. We will continue to study the environment and I want to assure you that in the long term, the board remains confident that it has a clear strategy 
to deliver a good return on investment. I want to, I want to say that winning with Nigeria remains a long-term focus. And this has also been the focus over the years. which is a commitment to delivering long-term sustainable value to our shareholders. In concluding, may I, on behalf of the board, the management and other employees, thank you all, our esteemed shareholders once again, for your unflinching support through the years. Jointly together, we have kept the company on top for more than 70 years. And I'm confident that together we will continue to be on top in the foreseeable future. I want to thank our parent company, Heineken MB, for its unwavering support for the company and unshaking belief in our country, Nigeria. The confidence with which Heineken joined a few other organizations to establish Nigerian breweries more than 70 years ago remain and will continue. I would like to use this opportunity to give special thanks to Mr. John Francois Van Boxmeer, the former Heineken CEO and chairman of the executive board, who bowed out last month after 36 years of meritorious service. 15 years of which was at the end of affairs of the group. Welcome his successor, Mr. Dov Van Den Brink, himself a thoroughbred Heineken person. I think we shall give them a round of applause. For them. We got their support in getting to where we are. And I, I remember a series of meetings that were held during the M&A, Majors and Acquisition and then I. May I also say a big thank you to Mr. Ted Opisicide who resigned as a director of the company effective from 1st April 2020 to enable him focus and concentrate on fulfilling the objectives of his foundation and our foundation COVID-19 think tank to which in the best. On this note, my colleagues and I will be pleased to answer any question which you may have on the report account, an account which has been laid before you before we proceed to the next item on the agenda. Thank you very much indeed. If you don't clap for me, I'll clap for myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, my colleagues and I will be pleased to answer any question which you may have on the report and account before we report the, before we proceed to the next item on the agenda. Yes, Mr. You please, you have to come here. Mr. Please identify. Ah, sir. <laughs> ah, he's looking younger every day. Ah, look at him. <laughs> sir, Sonny. Sir, Sonny. I want, I 
would say and acknowledge the fact that we have received the views of Sir Sonin Wusu. And I want to thank you very much for the points you made. And I want to thank you once again that all the points you made will be followed through by management without the least temptation of being sold in heaven. Thank you, sir. We will do this. And I now give you the opportunity. To thank you very you. much, Mr. Thank Chairman. Um, it has always been very difficult to recognize people easily because we are almost grades now because of COVID-19. So, but I remain sad on him also. I'm the National Coordinator Emeritus Independent Shareholder Association. Mr. Tech, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would have loved to follow your protocol, but unfortunately there is something missing. When it comes to protocol, it's always a difficult thing to follow at times. Um, Mr. Chairman of the Board, fellow directors, distinguished shareholders, we also have in our midst the Honorable President of uh, Chartered Institute of Bankers, the new president, which we must always recognize as our own, Mr. Bayo Lugbemi. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, there's no doubt in my mind and our mind that all that you have read as your additional statement, they are all statement of fact. Without cooperation, institution will not move forward. So I also join you in appreciating the technical partners and every other parties that you have mentioned on this occasion. So we, as shareholders, we appreciate them. But when it comes to when we'll be very principal on issues too, we will always be principal on issues. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to join my appreciation on Atedo Peter's side. He's a very nice man that has helped the capital market to the best of his knowledge and doesn't mean that, despite that, that we don't have clashes along the line as human beings. So please join our voice to the voices of the directors in extending our appreciation to him on his uh, exit from the board. Mr. Chairman, on page 15 and 19 of this annual report, we would like to thank you again. It shows how difficult and how uh, the board actually thought of shareholders as it consigns our palliative in dividend that you were able to bring down six billion naira in reserve to add to what you have paid to us is really very appreciative. And sometimes this money was a punitive issue to us, but now it's been returned back to us. I hope there will be more to be returned back to us. So Chairman, thank you for that initiation of uh, uh, bringing that money. On page 94, Mr. Chairman, where we have unclaimed dividend, the initiative is very good, but when we have unclaimed dividend of four point something billion naira, I remembered very clearly that there was a public talk whereby the moderator of that talk was asking that with COVID-19, isn't it possible to take on claim dividend of shareholders and add to it and fight the pandemic? We said no, that is not possible. And because the money continued to grow, that is why they are putting an eye on it. And I make due to say that that money does not belong to Nigerian builders because it's been paid out already. And I continue to say, that such dividend has to be domiciled with the registrars. The issue of SEC coming to say registrars should surrender some of was made in a very bad belly issue. So the appropriate thing when a dividend is declared is that the money should move to the registrars. 
and they are the custodian of this money without company interfering with it. Mr. Chairman, I'm bringing this because we have intention of fighting this issue. We have had a situation where some of the companies that took back on claim dividend went under. Who do you hold? There's no insurance backing it. There's just nothing. And I think in a reasonable way, companies should also help us to fight this issue. I know you were a minister of industry and all this and that. You know very clearly that that issue was done with bad intention. Somebody somewhere must have wronged the leadership of SEC at that time, and they did all this. And regulators are not easily challenged in this country, so they are having their ways, but we have to fight back. I've told the registrars that this war should not be your war. It should be the war of the companies. It should be the war of shareholders to fight this wrong approach to dividend. If anything happened to my dividend, I don't go to company. I go to the registrar, whom I know is the custodian of the dividend to find out what has happened to my dividend. So it is very important that we should continue to talk about these things until it enters the authorities hear that a wrong has actually been done. Mr. Chairman, I looked at the pictorials in this annual report, about 12 pages, 12 pages. I want to thank you for the little space you gave to the, uh, uh, the shareholders of this company. And I want you to look at the whole pictorials, about 12 pages in this annual report. And I want you to also see the little place you gave to the uh, uh, shareholders of this company, whether it is really appropriate for the shareholders of this company to be given that small space in the annual report. Mr. Chairman, my, I do not, I really do not want to ask too much questions, but there are certain things that we need some clarity from you. Do we have opportunity of getting palliative from government as it concerns our sector with the COVID-19? Agricultural sector, this and that. If we have the opportunity, I am appealing that we apply for that opportunity and get this thing to assist the company's effort. In, uh, um, on the CEO report, he reported about Benue Buries. Benue Buries. I actually want to know what we are doing as of today. I have actually been advising that six months into the end of the year, there must be an updated report to help shareholders understand what has happened between the end of the year and the six months when we are holding an AGM. And that also affects uh, receivables on page 103 of this annual report. Receivables on page 103 of this annual report. I'm quite sure the receivables cannot be what it is in this annual report as of today. And it is very important, just two lines of information to the shareholders will enable us to understand that that receivable had gone down or it has gone up with new deliveries to these customers. Because it's a continuity. We need to know all this. It will save us certain questions about receivables or our impression about receivables. Mr. Chairman, export. We are very static on export. That's on page 79. Very static. And that will be a way out of helping this company. Because from export, we shall have some uh, uh, foreign exchange flow, and that again will help us. At the advent of foreign exchange today, almost 400 or 400 and something per dollar. It's very punitive on the company, but when we have a way of increasing our export to other parts of the world, that will also help us. Mr. Chairman, Finally, I want to refer us to the balance sheet of the company itself. If you look at that, 
Let's take it from page 54 of the annual report. Page 54. We have share premium account standing at 74 billion naira. We also have retained earnings standing at 89 billion naira. The last bonus given to shareholders was in, in uh, the last one was in uh, uh, 204, thereabouts. That was the last one that was given to shareholders. I strongly believe that having been able to weather the storm from the last time the bonus was given, that with this robust earning per share and retain and shareholders uh, premium, the company can also do well in giving the shareholders some level of bonus for the happiness of the shareholders. Um, I'm trying to locate the, where the table is. 125. Thank you, Bayo. If we go to page 125, 125, yeah, 125, yes, is there. The last one was given June, 30 June 04. 30 June 04 to now, is about uh, 16, 16 years, 16 years without a bonus. We can understand much earlier time that we are just coming out of the problem of bonuses, but I think now we have stabilized enough to be able to, to get a bonus from the company. Mr. Chairman, I want to appreciate you. On a final note, Mr. Chairman, I think as we are moving into stages in life, Mr. Chairman, I watch you very clearly. You are not talking like uh, military men. You are not talking like military men. You push out your words like a bullet. Now, I don't know because I, I know Nigerian Buris is older than you. Is there any problem, Mr. Chairman? Because I know from where you came from, there are a lot of military generals from there. You have started, you've started behaving like one with your voice and everything. So I, I got worried because I know you to be a very good civilian. I remember one. You remember one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for Thank the opportunity. You. And uh, I'd like to also pray that may God continue to bless all of us and make Nigerian beauty to continue to be relevant to our lives by bringing smiles to the faces of the inhabitants of this world. But let us also remember that each time we're having this kind of thing with the situation in the country, we should always pray at the AGM to put all our problems and everything to the hands of God. God bless all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have so many questions. Thank you very much. Indeed. But just on the last beat where you said I was speaking like a minute, uh, I think it's far from here. Many years ago when I left school, I actually applied. And I was and I was taken into the army, but I didn't go. I, you know, you know, I, I didn't go because uh, it was during the war <laughs> when I was passing through the bridge and I saw the number of dead people <laughs> when it, when they started killing themselves. My attraction of seeing that general in a green Mercedes disappeared. <laughs> and it has still disappeared up to now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think we take the role here. Uh, you, you spoken.
Do we take a killer day? Then, my dear Nonna. Then, then we subject it with a lady. There are so many questions. There are so many points. I hope you are, you are keeping them. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The chairman, board members, uh, management of uh, Nigerian Beauty here, uh, regulatory authorities, registrar, and the current president of uh, Chattah Digital Banker. Uh, my colleague, uh, shareholders, good morning. My name is Matthew Akinladi, president of Noble Shareholders Solidarity Association. It is my pleasure to be here this morning to more or less celebrate our company for having its head above the water. Um, I want to join uh, Sasani Nguzu in the ecumium he has passed on the chairman the managing director and the, and the company, uh, and other directors. I believe our directors have been doing great work. Uh, last year was not a particularly good year. That was the year of election. That, that was the year when government focused on the bureaus for revenue generation. And that was the time they increased the rate of excise duty. Uh, there is no doubt that all this posed a lot of challenge uh, last year. If not for, your, for being innovative and for the array of products that you have, probably the story would have been bad. But we give thanks to God that in terms of our top line uh, is flattened, but you are still able to record good profit. Uh, beyond that, I know building industry, uh, the competition is very high. Some people have come in to cause some upset. And I've uh, looked at some other bureaus' financial report this year. Though they have not done their AGM, I reviewed quarterly reports that go to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And I think Nigerian Bureau is ahead of the pack. So I congratulate you. Continue to be innovative. Continue to improve on your brand, on your products. And I think, uh, I, 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 I don't have doubt that the current management and the board will continue to make positive impact uh, on the company. One thing I want to commend is commitment of the board I look at page 36 of the annual report. There were five board meetings in the year. Of the 11 board members, nine attended all the meeting. There are two that miss only one meeting each. It's a very, very good performance for the board. It means the board is devoted to the business of the, of the company. And even the executive committee attendance. In fact, this is another, this is very novel, that executive committee meeting attendance is put in the annual report for members to see how effective they are. And that the attendance too, 
was very impressive. So congratulations. Let's uh, keep it up. Um, our profit after tax dropped uh, by 70% from 19 billion to 16 billion. I think our companies is investor friendly. That despite the fact that our profit after tax is 16 billion, we are, in, uh, we are paying a dividend of 16 billion as well, both interim and, and final, which is uh, commendable. Uh, thank you for, for that. Few things again, when it comes to managing the balance sheet of the company, I think the company is doing great job on trade and other receivable, on page 54. Trade and other receivable came down by 39% from 35 billion to 21 billion. It's quite commendable. Inventory rose by 80% to 38.5 billion. I think that is good for you. Uh, it may be a strategic position uh, to ensure that even when there's shortage of foreign exchange, you have material to work with. For me, it is good, and uh, I don't have any quarrel with it. One area that worries me is on your increasing level of borrowing. Uh, on page 54, when I look at non-current borrowing and current borrowing, both of them came to 55.7 billion. The previous year it was 42.5 billion. So we have increased our borrowing level by 30%. No wonder then, if we go to page 55, our finance costs rose by 53% from 7.8 billion the previous year to 12.1 billion in the current year. And I'm not, I, I won't be sorry, and in spite of the huge increase in borrowing, even the cash and bank balances on page 54 came down by 64% from 14.8 billion to 6.3 billion. So we need to pay attention to our funding to see what is the kind of right mix of funding that we need. It is time, is it time for us to call on the shareholders to bring in money? Because I look at it, the finance cost of 12 billion that we paid to banks or to whoever is the lender, if you can pull back about 6 billion of that back to profit, it will be significant. And, uh, and I think as the financial sector is today, especially the interest in banks and all that, if an investor get opportunity to, in to invest further in Nigerian beauty and to give the kind of return that Nigerian beauty is giving today, it's going to be better off than putting his money uh, on money market or fixed deposit in the bank. So I want us to have uh, a look at that. Another thing I note on page 80, uh, remuneration of non-executive directors moved from 22 million to 97.6 million. I don't quite understand the movement. The, the, you see that we have new appointment to the board or whatever, because that's about 342% uh, increase. So I will be very grateful 
If you can give some explanation for that. Again, I thank God for Nigerian building, being a good corporate citizen. One of Nigerian problem you are trying to solve. Number of employees on page 82. Number of employees that was 2,183 in 2018. At the close of 2019, it's increased by 119 to 3,102, which is good. Helping Nigeria, because one of the critical issues in this country is high level of, of unemployment. And that again has escalated crime rates. So we want to say thank you for helping in that direction. Now, when I look at page 119, and I look at the five-year summary, and I look at share prices, we started from 136 Naira. The following year, 136 Naira, it declined to, uh, to 135 to 86 Naira. And by end of December last year, it came down to 59. As at Friday last week, it came down to 38. As at Monday yesterday, the price of Nigerian share, uh, Nigerian beauty share, came down to 37 Naira. So uh, investors have lost a lot of value. So we have to think out of the box, how do we improve the investor's value? That is very, very important and critical. And looking at your first quarter result, uh, there's no reproof there. Because I could see the revenue uh, flattened again compared with last year, 83.2 billion to 83.2 billion. Flattened, you are able to manage cost of sales, uh, there's no increase, but I mean, I mean marketing costs keep rising. I, to a large extent, I can understand you are facing stiff competition, but how far do you want to go? How much do you want to spend? And that's the area where we need to maintain some kind of uh, balancing. So, when we look at the current challenges that is standing us on the face in Nigeria today, we have the impact of COVID-19, which is not fully reflected in your first quarter result, because probably last month of the year was in first quarter. I mean, last month of uh, the quarter uh, was when we had uh, lockdown. But we have had the lockdown for so long, and I don't know if beauty has resumed full production, but even then, I inspect that there will be more impact than you have felt in the first quarter. So what are we going to, what is our strategy to ensure that we mitigate the impact? More than that, with the falling oil prices, we should expect scarcity of foreign exchange. It's happening now, already. I read somewhere sometimes last week that Nigeria has about $7 billion that could not be remitted. So which means the, the, the scarcity of foreign exchange is a, is a reality. What are we doing to look inward for sourcing material, developing local uh, inputs that we, redu we, we reduce our dependence on foreign exchange to 
uh, get our, our materials. Uh, it's easy to criticize, <laughs> but when it comes to operational matter, it's not bed of roses. I know it's not bed of roses, but please, I will challenge the management and the board to really think out of the box and see what can we do to raise our head above the competition. And I pray that uh, you will succeed with unrelenting effort. Uh, before I go to sit down, I want to say uh, congratulations once again. Thank you for being investor friendly by giving us some good return. And that's our own palliative. A lot of what are retirees, and we depend on, on investment income to, to survive. So please keep the flag flying. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your advice and thank you for your observation. I think we take, uh, yes, no, then we can. Thank you very much. The chairman, other members of the board, both in person and visual, very distinguished fellow shareholders, again, uh, both those in the house and those in their homes. Mr. Chairman, I want to start from where the last speaker dropped it. Uh, but before then, Mr. Chairman, I heard you say that the company secretary had not had up to four hours sleep in the last couple of days. Uh, but when I also read this account, I saw what was referred to as the Fed tax. I will be asking that the sleep that he didn't have, we should also put it in the Fed sleep. <laughs> okay. But Chairman, speaking seriously to the account, if you go to page 8 and 9, uh, and unfortunately it's referring to the same person, I realized there on that page, uh, 8 and 9, where you have the pictures of the, uh, the board. Uh, interestingly, I didn't realize how much of anything that the company secretary is in love with. Uh, because if you look above his head, what he decided to take there is anything. And I said, ah, I know he was putting a double three uh, very close to his pocket. And I said, okay, I now know uh, how to catch this man. Uh, realizing that uh, also on page 12 and 13, he also likes enjoyment, which is good. And I'm sure that quite a number of persons will want to join him. But let me start my main contribution on the basis of the future. And the, the fact, the reason that this is important for me is that yes, yesterday is important, today is important, but in the life of any organization, for me, the tomorrow is far more important than the today. And I'm happy that uh, Chief Akinla did it points to a number of things. The first of the future that I will be asking of the company, uh, when the registrar read when the registrar okay when the registrar read the proxy or quorum position, he talked about 226 shareholders being present and realizing that as a company, yes, by proxy, as a company, 
we have over 110,000 shareholders. I think that visual meeting should be something that should become part of our DNA going forward. Yes, we'll have the in-person AGM, but it is important that we also use this as a medium uh, of making sure that more and more shareholders get involved in what we do. And if you're wondering why that is my position, Mr. Chairman, I want to refer you to page 94, which also has to do with unclaimed dividend. On unclaimed dividend, in two years, the company has taken back 985 million return money. Return that can never be claimed by any shareholder because they are over 12 years old. 985. And that, for me, is a turnover or revenue of a number of Nigerian companies. So the more that we engage our shareholders, the chances are higher that such uh, sums will also not accumulate for that long. So on that note, I will also be asking that going forward, we should have the breakdown of unclaimed dividend along the dividend overview, uh, which is on one of the pages. And because that itself will give a better understanding as to what is going to be next in terms of being status bar. But from our assessment, another 600 million will be going start to buy by the end of this year, which again is a huge, huge figure. I also will be hoping that going forward, Mr. Chairman, uh, that one of the things that the auditors must help us with, yes, excise duty has been with us now for two years, but it's not sufficient to mention it without a figure. That amount should be stated in our account so that the understanding of everybody will be better. Uh, because like, again, like the speaker before me said, uh, so that when we also take the companies on, we also have a better understanding as to what the company is doing uh, to be able to overcome the challenges that also come in their way. So please, going forward, excise duty as a sum that we pay to government, just like tax, must be stated in an Alwan account. It's also important that going forward, the trust fund account must have a summary in the annual account. We are not asking you to give it details like you have in 234. No. But the line that you have it should state how much we did spend in the year under review, vis a vis how much did we make. No. Because in the first place, it's our money. Okay? If it's our money and then we don't know what is happening with that business, it's a major, major challenge for me. Let me also go further to say that on page 44 and 24, uh, we spent over 300, almost 350 million in various projects. And I'm wondering, in view of what we have seen, uh, wouldn't it become important that going forward, what we should begin to look at is having legacy projects. Projects, yes, it will not cut around and cut across the way we currently run it. But if you have 300 million in, a, in one or two projects, the impact for me will be far more reaching for whichever location that has received it. And that way, our contribution, I'm sure, will be better appreciated. Having said that, let me close this segment on the note of what is our plan for Benue bottling plant. What is our plan? Uh, because it's not sufficient for us to say, oh, we have a plant, but the plant is idle. Uh, because even when it's idle, there's a cost attached to it. I'm sure we'll pay security men, we'll pay all sorts of things to make sure that that asset is protected. What is the future plan for that asset? Again, considering the sensitivity of project location in the country. Okay? Mr. Chairman, I am interested in this because I know that you're also very interested in this. I want to take the presentation that, again, the speaker before me had done uh, 
a little further uh, on various two pages, sorry, page 61 and 120. The share price in the year under review recorded a 31.4% drop. If you take as at end of trading, or rather as at trading today, we had a situation where between the end of December 2019 and date, we've lost another 22 naira, which means that the share price has dropped further by 37.2%. Yes, I know that one of the answers that you are likely to give is that yes, the share price even did go to 22, Kobo, 22 naira uh, in the course of the year. But if you look at the figure that even the speaker before me mentioned, 136 naira to 37 naira, which means any investor who came into the company in the last five years, five and a half years, has lost 73% of his investment. And the reason I say this is that Relating it to the first quarter position, uh, which again, if you analyze the profits, the best we'll be hoping for uh, in 2020 will be a 22 billion naira profit after that, all things being equal. So it's important that we begin to engage much more uh, when it comes to share price management. I'm not asking for share price manipulation. There are two different things. Uh, because very many times, companies in our environment haven't don't seem to probably realize that share price is service, the product, and it needs to be managed. Uh, because the more that people understand the business that you do and the way you're going, the better uh, you also appreciate it. But having said that, Mr. Chairman, that is not to say that I didn't recognize the fact that on page 84, that we have new assets of 38 billion in the year under review. I know that that itself is also not cheap. Uh, coupled with the fact that on page 115, 234 did also post a profit. Uh, no matter how small you probably think, but mm -hmm. also means that that business is not a challenge for us. But going back to the issue of uh, borrowing, I want in providing the answer to what our plans for the future uh, haven't talked about, we borrowing to be able to remove more of the foreign uh, foreign interest and foreign currency-based borrowing, hence we've done. I want us to relate that with what we're doing now with the commercial paper program. Again, like if you remember what I said earlier, uh, the, the information available is the one that helps me to determine uh, what should be my attitude to the investment that I have in any particular company. That's why I'll be interested as to what we're doing and probably pushing it a little further. What is going to be our long-term position when it comes to funding? Uh, because whether we want it or not, uh, I expect that you're going to do more of marketing. Because if you don't do and you are not available physically to the minds of the uh, consuming public, you probably also won't have their money. Uh, so it's the issue for me is how much more can we get from our funding uh, going forward? Having said that, I also want to join uh, the chairman in welcoming BRICS as the new CEO, global CEO. Uh, I know that he's not box mayor, uh, but there's something that I think that we should also help to impress on the new CEO. I'm talking about global. Yes, I appreciate the fact that um, what we hold as Nigerians is far smaller than what the foreign partner do hold. Uh, since you have over 53% of the company. Uh, I also do appreciate the fact that uh, only three expatriates are currently in senior management. I also do appreciate the fact that a number of Nigerians or a pocket of Nigerians are in under jurisdiction uh, in terms of top management. But I don't think it is sufficient. Uh, it is not sufficient in the sense that first, you don't have the list of Nigerian exported to other regions in this account. Uh, it's important that we, we get to know them, again, so that we can understand the mindset of what. But one major challenge that I also think that we must address as a company, a Nigerian company, much more importantly for me, uh, is the fact that we have two executive directors, the MD and the finance director. 
and they are not Nigerians. Uh, because I'm sure that I can, that is how many years old, will be amazed that we can't have and we can't find qualified Nigerians to be finance directors. Come to think about the MD, the last time that you had a Nigerian MD, over 14 years. Okay? And the reason I say this is that if you look at your board, the chairman, I'm sure, was invited because he had sat to also be an MD in a Nigerian company. At Edo Peter's side, that is outgone now, also was a chairman, was an MD of a Nigerian company. Uh, the lady uh, that we also have present here is also run an organization. Ifeko has also run an organization. That is the pool from which everybody who wants anybody will want to go to. So if you're not helping Nigeria to create that pool, it becomes a challenge for me as a Nigerian. And for some persons who probably want to take it further, I say, oh, probably they don't like blacks. So it's important that you begin to look at, and I don't think it will take you 14 years to be able to find an ethically right person, an intellectually sound person to run Nigerian bureaus. I don't think so. So please, let's begin to engage Briggs as to the need for us to begin to move forward uh, but the way we are now, I don't think is the best for us. Yes, I, I did mention that there are only three of you. But when the three holds the vehicle, the other persons are basically passengers. Okay, you can't have two drivers. Even for Shell, that has two managing directors, one of the very few companies in the world with two CEOs. This, we also know where the powers are in. So it's important that we begin to relook what we're doing. Otherwise, we'll be also begin to take... By the way, it's also important to mention that Nigerian Bureau is, is one of the very few companies with a number of old investors. And if they've come from that background and you treat them this way, you'll be alienating yourself from them in terms of support. By the way, if I also work in Nigerian Bureau, fortunately for me, no relations of mine, I can confirm and I'm sure you can confirm since my name is, is known to you, no relation of mine works in Nigeria. So I'm not saying this because I'm interested in I'm saying this because if I'm, an, if I'm a young graduate and I have offers from Nigerian Bureau or two and three other companies, and I look at the profile and say, oh, in the last 14 years, no Nigerian has been as a chief, chief executive, I won't go to you with due respect because he already tells me that this is where my career ends. Okay? So it's important that we be, because that itself may be one of the ways that we begin to attract talent especially at the, young, at the lower run, uh, and those talents can become run, uh, can get to the top. On a final note, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for inviting me, uh, because like I said, with 110,000 plus shareholders, and you've just invited only five of us, or six, uh, that also means that you have some uh, regards for us, and I will, some of us will not take those regards for granted. And that's why will, I, as a person, will continue to push you uh, so that you continue to get better. Uh, unfortunately for us, Mr. Chairman didn't go to the army. And unfortunately for him, he also didn't come as uh, Juliana. Because if he came as Juliana, one of the things he will even be doing as 70 plus, he will be making sure that the underlay, the overlay, the lipsticks, all of them are still getting better so I can continue to look attractive. And that is the life of economy. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, shall we be moving? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Progress. Yes. Progress. Yes. Progress. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all. Thank you very much indeed. So we, we've had comments, suggestions, advice from my able shareholders here present. And I want to thank you on behalf of the, of, uh, the board for your input. We very much appreciate it.
And I can assure you that we'll continue to listen, and you will have seen that. If we don't listen, there is no way we'll be where we are today. We don't want to say that we know it all. We don't. The moment you stop learning, that's when you continue to go down, like the oil price. May the good Lord continue to help us. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the point you made, the point that we first thought of going into pioneer profit, you know, in order to cushion, you know, the effect of the current difficulties with the organization. You don't talk of COVID, talk of minimum distancing level in between two persons. Talking about the maximum number of people that you should stay in a particular location without making sure that they, they, they have some money. You know, to cushion the effect of this pandemic. And that's one of the reasons why we seize the opportunity to thank the authorities to put talks together in organizing, organizing meetings of this thing. Once again, I want to thank you. Unclaimed dividend. It costs right across three, four speakers. Is this something that is worrying? Something that we as an organization constantly look at? If you looked at the annual report, we give suggestions. I will continue to do this. Because dividend belongs to the investor. However, we have a law that says after a dividend is unclaimed, you know, for X number of years, you know, the the right to such ownership becomes challenged. But this this is what the law says today, fortunately. And you know yourself that we are very low abiding. If we are not, we will not be where we are today. However, whatever is being done, we can be sure to receive our support. Who knows? Last one was 2004. There is something that your board talks about every time. I assure you that as well as when we think there is need to revisit it again. Don't forget that there are so many things, not quite clear, where we're going to go, the effect of COVID. Where will we be? Remain. And we only do is only to stop and continue to pray. I would like this content to in my address. A number of organizations, the greatest return is to remain on your two feet by the end of the year. There are a number of organizations that are not, that are not quite there. And the fact that we are not there yet and we will never be there, you know, means something that we should be thankful. Thank you, Mr. Akilade, you spoke, we are ahead of the fact, you spoke about share price. This is something we look at every day. It, at times, don't forget, people like to take profit. Unfortunately, the number of investors today, the trading share, as looking at shareholding like a long-term effect. 
they want to buy at 10 naira and look at when it become 12 and they sell it. This is what we look at. And if I look at what is happening in the stock exchange, look at uh, what's happening with CIBN and the like. They say people are taking their profit. However, as a long term investor, I don't think we should be looking at that. We're looking at the, the future. I remember my father, today we still have some of those shares at faith hang on the wall. <laughs> because he prized himself as a shareholder in the organization. I hope this will return very soon. Attendance of meetings, I can assure you, we, we are there and we'll continue with the commitment. Uh, increasing number of borrowing, I think we have spoken about it. Uh, you say higher any the remuneration. I think this went quite wrong. This year, compared to last year, there is a reclassification that should have been done, which wasn't done. That's why it's given that mistaken belief. As there's, a, there's an amount, the exact amount I will tell you before we go, that, that was shown as um, admin instead of being shown as a, uh, as a director of remuneration. I can assure you it's not an increase. It's a question of reclassification both years. 2019 compared to 2018, that was done. And in fact, the auditor saw this, we looked through. You are talking especially about uh, myself. Yeah, I hope I had such an increase. I can assure you I didn't get a copper increase. I, I check and I say, Where is the money? Thank you very much. We'll make sure that this doesn't. Maybe in future, at it was had a note. So I put that to that. Okay. Uh, XID to figure. Don't forget, really. Before the players started playing games, for exercise duty, you were to be a holder in due cost. Exercise duty is shown on the board. You are collecting it on behalf of government and you pay them. But some, because of the spending and the competition, they collect exercise and it's absorbed as a cost to the organization. I can assure we're going to look into this. Make sure that uh, uh, it does, there is no time we don't talk about it. Education trust fund you spoke about it was in the plan for the plan. I will get the our CEO to speak about that. What exactly we're trying to do about the Bedouin bottling plan? Uh, why any deal provided by aha? Uh -huh. I've noted your comment about the position of appointment of Nigerians as my director or whatever. I want to say to you whether I mean before we see the annual report too, that today we have more Nigerians serving at Patriots abroad as part of their development program than we have expatriates serving in Nigeria on expectation for them. It's even contained in the annual report there. Today, we have two Nigerians serving as CEOs. One left, both of them left Nigeria as part of that development project. One is CEO in, uh, in Ethiopia. And one is CEO in Burundi. And you know, to, to 
to, to develop them. Today, the marketing director in Nigeria is, and the sales director, they both served abroad sector. Before they were developed to a point that they were brought back to Nigeria to, to occupy this strategic post. This is then looked at. If you look at page 18 and 19 of my report, I did mention. Okay? Okay. And the, the last. Okay. Well, I think that's that so far. Now, what are the other? Thank you. Profit share. None again. Nakila Day, I think, is covered. Unclaimed dividend is covered. I wish you could see the way we talk about that. Unclaimed dividend all over the place. Bio, I want to recognize you once again. You are the You have the present president of Chartered Institute of Bankers. So we have another president here. Thank you very much. <laughs> I thought I'd be like you. It's not easy. Cash must flow. <laughs> no, I, I, if there is any other thing I want to do, but meanwhile, can you talk about the. Yes. Of course, you, 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 you could see the management we've done. I, I won't comment on the management uh, of the results of the second quarter, but I do say that in these times, it's very important that we continue managing receivables very attentive, and we are doing so. So I'm very confident we're doing a very good job there, especially at these times, because these are uncertain times where you must make sure that your receivables are not out of control. So that is something we are doing. You mentioned export. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, this is an area which we need to develop, and we will. And uh, it's certainly more important now uh, as a source of foreign uh, exchange, even more than uh, its cost. Uh, we believe that this is something we will and, and, and we must develop even further. So I fully agree with you on that one. Um, I, would, I would also um, mention some of the things I think you said on the finance court, the chairman mentioned a lot of as well. We are not having any borrowing in foreign currency, and actually, we increase the borrowing to pay a lot of the backlog that was in foreign currency, um, which has helped us a lot, especially now in these times where uh, the value of the naira might uh, might devalue slightly against against the foreign currency. Um, on the share price, uh, chairman has made also some comments. I think it is wise to say that. The whole profit pool of the sector, as you can see, increased. Uh, if you look 15 years back and you look at the profit pool of the beer sector, you could see that as of the years 90s and 2000, it started to increase. It reached its peak about 2014 and then it started to decrease. It's, it's due to many factors. Increased competition, of course, has, has been part of that. If you look at the share of the profit pool that Nigerian breweries is taking, Actually, in the last year, it took more than 100% of the profit pool, which means that um, the whole sector was negative, and it was Nigerian breweries, let's say, that took more than 100% of the profit pool. This is not something healthy, because we want a sector that is profitable. It is a, a reflection of the times, of the competitiveness, of the increase on excise. But we, we still believe, and we are really convinced about that, that Nigeria has everything um, uh, in terms of potential. If you look at the population, if you look at the uh, demographic, the per capita consumption, looking at the future, this is a country that has a huge opportunity. It's been uh, shown in the past, and it will continue to show in the future. So we are very convinced that we are in the right place and with the right footprint brand breweries to capture most of the value of the growth of the beer sector in the future. That, that is 
uh, for us a, a, a no doubt. And that's, by the way, why other companies are coming to Nigeria. There's no surprise on that because they also see that same potential. Um, you mentioned administration and marketing expenses, but you referred to the Q1 of this year. I would rather not comment uh, now on this year. We can, after the session, discuss about the, the, the reason for that and the impact of the COVID, uh, which we also explain in the Q1. But let's focus today maybe on the, on the 2019 results. Um, some of the, uh, on the venue bottling plan, what, one of the things is we, we have um, a number of assets or lands that we look forward strategically as interesting uh, investment. So even if today there are some costs related to that, I think you referred to that, or Mr. Akinlade, in terms of uh, security, the costs are not uh, very big, uh, given the strategic uh, uh, location of these assets and lands. And we believe that in the future that can be helpful. I was very recently in Makurdi myself, and um, I visited some of the uh, properties there, and we believe that these are very strategic uh, lands uh, that we can leverage in the future. So that's why we don't dispose them. We, we are not utilizing them, but we don't dispose them also either. Um, on the experts, uh, the chairman has talked, uh, I think, sufficiently about the experts. I agree with you that the, we need to develop uh, diversity. That's what we believe in the company, not just uh, race, but also gender. And by the way, this management team, this executive committee has had the first three women in a management team in the history of Nigerian breweries, uh, which is also a big step because it's not just about the, the, gender, the race, but it's also the gender. And as the chairman said, there's a lot more expatriates Nigerians abroad than there are expatriates in Nigeria, and that's part of the development. But there's highly, highly talented Nigerians and I'm, I'm convinced some of them will come back and become a managing director of Nigerian breweries. Uh, one of my recent colleagues, Chidu Mayani, was promoted very recently to managing director. So it's the first African woman in the Heineken group to be uh, managing director. Um, so that, for instance, an another example. Um, on, the, on the Felix Oweheri Educational Trust Fund, um, we, I won't dwell on all the activities we are doing on building the schools, on uh, Maltina Teacher of the Year. We are really supporting uh, education through this fund, as you know. Um, the, 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 the trust is followed um, regularly and the activities are also reported. So I can maybe after this session today give you more insights on them. I think these are some of the compliments to the chairman's comments or questions. Um, if I miss someone, uh, just let me know, please. Uh, although if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it later. As we are talking now, everybody, including competition and the like, they are waiting to see what we're going to do. And, uh, I just want to thank the board and management. And I want to thank you all for appreciating what is being done. And I want to thank you all for not holding back what we think and how we think the organization can move forward better. We will continue to look at it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Shall we move? The next item, once again, I thank you. And wherever supportive shareholders, I thank you for your comments. I thank you for the questions you've asked. And I thank you for the way and manner to these discussions have gone and will continue to go and grow. Having fully dealt with the first item, we now move to the other items on the agenda. In view of the nature of this meeting, and to ensure that the voting wishes of shareholders as contained in the proxy forms are captured, I, under section 224 subsection 1A of Kama, and article 
59, sub Article 1 to A of the Articles of Association, hereby declare that voting at this meeting shall be by poll, except for the item on the agenda relating to election of members of the audit committee. Please note that ordinary resolutions are required for all the items. That is, a simple majority of the votes will survive for each resolution. On this note, we now come to the next item on the agenda, which is declaration of the pledge. I hereby move that a total dividend of sixteen billion seventy three million seven hundred and seventy three thousand one hundred and twenty three naira only that is two naira and one cover ordinary share of fifty cover each. B, and is hereby declared in respect of the year 31st December 2019. That, having earlier paid an interim dividend, which was declared in October 2019, in the sum of 3,998,000,000, 450, 1,026 naira only, that is 50, 50 cover only, by ordinary share of 50 cover each. The final dividend now will be 12 billion, 75 million, 322,000, and 97 naira only, that is 1 naira 51 copper per share of 50 copper each. Thank you very much. The total dividend for the year is composed of 10 billion, 73 million, 773,000, 123, Naira only from the profits of the year and 6 billion Naira only from the company's pioneer profits from prior years. Please note that if the proposed final dividend is approved, it shall be subject to deduction of withholding tax at the appropriate rate and the dividend will be payable on the 24th of June 2020 to all shareholders whose names appeared on the company's register of members at the close of business on the 4th of March 2020. Would someone please rise and second this motion? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any question before the motion is put to meeting? Anybody who doesn't want dividend? No, so I can continue. I now put the motion to the meeting. I hereby direct that the votes to be taken forthwith, forthwith by the use of the voting device given to you on arrival. The independent auditor will act as its 
scrutiny. The registrar will guide us through the use of voting device and also conduct the voting exercise. Registrar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for shareholders present and voting. You have the voting device with you. You press one if you are voting for. You press two if you are voting against. Press one if you are voting for. We will tell you at the appropriate time, sir. Not yet. You press one if you are voting for. You press two if you are voting against. For those who have sent in their proxies, they have voted in advance. So if you are here, a shareholder, and you have sent a proxy, you can't vote a second time. You have voted already. Thank you very much. So the, the voting starts now. You press one if you are voting for, press two if you are voting again. Seven seconds. Five, four, three, two. The poll is over. Give us like 20 seconds to give results. Thank you. At the end of uh, the close, at the closure of uh, the voting, we had 225 voting for, none voting against. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chiefs, ladies and gentlemen, based on the results I've verified by the independent auditor, I hereby declare that the motion has been fully carried. Okay? The next item on the agenda is to re-elect directors including Chief Kola Jamodu, who is over 70 years old. Special notice to that effect have been received by the company in accordance with Section 256 of the Companies and Highlight Matters Act, Cap C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. As this item concerns me, it is my pleasure to call on the Managing Director CEO, Mr. Borbell, to chair this part of the proceeding. You would have seen from the report of the directors that these directors are due for re election in line with the Article 90 of the Articles of Association. They are Chief Kolawole Jamodu CFR. Mr. Sip Impra and Mrs. Ndidi Nguneli MFA. First director seeking re election, Chief Kolawole Jamodu CFR. I hereby move that Chief Kolawole Jamodu CFR be and he is hereby re elected a director of the company. Would, come, would someone please rise? No further questions. I now put the motion to the meeting. And I hereby direct that the vote be taken forthwith by the use of the voting device given to you on arrival. The independent auditor will act as scrutiny. I now call on the register to conduct the vote. Just like before, you are voting and you have your device. You press 1 or A for 2 or B again. Can you please just give us the... If you can't get the picture, just give us the vote. Let's start the vote. Thank you. At the end of the voting, we had 222 people voting for 98.23% and 4 that voted again. So, we had 99.7% uh, of Mr. Sipimstra, 
B, and he's hereby re-elected a director of the company. Will someone please rise and second the motion? Thank you very much, Matthew Akila Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any question before the motion is put? No? Okay. I now put the motion to the meeting. And I hereby direct that the votes be taken forthwith by the use of the voting device given to you on arrival. The independent auditor will act as the scrutineer. Is the auditor there so as to make it uh, part? Is there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for those shareholders present and voting. You still use your, your voting device. Press one, four, and two against. Like I said before, proxies are already have already voted, and we we'll turn to that side. Thank you. Good to put. Can we start the voting process? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You can voting poll has opened. I voted. Yeah, you should. Turn down. Somebody Who is this person not voting? Somebody may not vote. Okay, thank you very much. Voting. Two twenty-three persons voting for, two against which is 99.11 in terms of shareholding 5,469,253,101 voting for, which is 99.70% of shareholding. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Based on the results as verified by the independent auditor, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. Thank you. The third director seeking re-election is Mrs. Ndidi Wunen, a member of the Federal Republic. I hereby move that Mrs. Ndidi MFR be, and she is hereby re-elected a director of the company. Would someone please rise and second this motion? I, I have to second that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Double. Double support. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any question before the motion is put to the meeting? Any question? I now put the motion to the motion. I hereby direct that the vote be taken forthwith by the use of voting device given to you on arrival. As usual, you press one if you are voting for. And you press two if you are voting against. Okay. The poll is open. Thank you very much. We had forty. I'm um, 221 people voting for, five voted against, which is 97.79 in terms of uh, shareholders and proxies voting. 
In terms of holdings, 5,439,421,270 units voted for, which is 99.16%, while for the 6,045,773 units voted against, which is 0.84%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. James, ladies and gentlemen, based on the results as verified by the independent auditor, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. Thank you. She, she, she had to support it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of all re-elected directors, we would like to profoundly thank all our shareholders for the confidence reposed in us to continue to serve as directors in a great company. And we promise to continue to act in the best interest of the company. Thank you very much indeed. The next item on the agenda is to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the independent auditor. Section 361, subsection 1B of comma, requires that the remuneration be fixed by the company in general meeting or in such a manner as the company in general meeting may determine. I accordingly hereby move that the directors be and they are hereby authorized to fix the remuneration of the independent auditors for the year ending at the first December 2020. Would someone please rise and second this motion? Thank you very much. Is there any question before the motion is put to the, to the meeting? I now put the motion to the meeting. I hereby direct that the votes be taken forthwith by the use of the voting device given to you on arrival. I now invite the registrar to conduct the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Press 1 for uh, if you are voting for, and press 2 if you are voting against. Already proxies that I received have been, uh, have been counted, either for or against. Thank you very much. At the end of voting, we had 222 people voting for, that includes shareholders and proxies, and four voted against, 98.23% in terms of shareholders. In terms of shareholding, 5,454,250,000 331 shares voted for, which is 99.43% while 31,216,775 voted against, or 0757 percent Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Chiefs, ladies and gentlemen, based on the result presented by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. The next item on the agenda is the election of members of the Audit Committee. In accordance with Section 359, Subsection 4, comma, members of the Audit Committee are subject to re-election annually. Section 359, Subsection 5 requires that they be formally nominated. Accordingly, 
21 valid nominations were received from shareholders on the members to represent them in the other committee. The Laudin was you at the one. Eight, Tiger Joseph Samuemi, nominated by Epe, Linus Ideva. Fourteen, Agbajega Ni Oluwole, nominated by Olatunji Olufemi, Odumede. Fifteen, Lamino Sikiru Taiwo, nominated by Lawa Oluwa, Larry. Sixteen, Lawa Oluwa, Akim Larry, nominated by Lamina Sikiru Taiwo. Seventeen, Ajayi, Uluwa Femi Philip, nominated by Okwola, Emmanuel Larry Wajib. Eighteen, Okwola, Emmanuel Larry Wajib, nominated by Ajayi Uluwa Femi Philip. Nineteen, Omole Emmanuel Lulu, nominated by Oniwinde, Maria Adebome. Twenty, Kujanya, Olai Wola Yusu, nominated by Adilakun, Yukman Adeshola. And 21, Adilakun, Yukman Adeshola, nominated by Kujenya, Olai Wola Yusu. You are to elect three of these 21 nominated shareholders to represent you in the audit committee. For the avoidance of doubt, please note that voting shall be by sure fund and not a poll. Thus, voting will be done by the shareholders and the proxies here present. After the entire voting exercise, the result of the voting shall be announced by me. In this scrutiny, I will now proceed with taking the vote. In favor of the election of Chief Timothy Adeshi as the representative of the committee, signify by raising their right hand. You've taken the as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising Thank you of the election of Mr. David Ogutoye as a representative of the ship in the by raising their right hand. Were all those in favor of the election of William as a representative of the shareholders in the Please signify by raising their right hand. Okay. Who are those in Surai Juden, a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. Who are those in favor of the election of Bakari Sherifat as a Elders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. Who are those in favor of the election of as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee, raise their right hand. Who are all those favor? All those. Who are all those in favor of Aruleu? 
as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Adele Felix Fumilayo as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Uduniyi Temitokwe Kamoru as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Badero Michael Kayode as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Tiger Joseph Tamnuemi as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Agbaje Gani Oduwole as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Lamina Sikiru Taiwo as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Lawa Lulua, Akim Lanre, as a representative of the shareholders in the audit com committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. To all those in favor of the election of Ajay, Ulua Femi Philip, as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hands. To all those in favor of the election of, of Opola, Emmanuel Olari Waju, as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, Please signify by raising their right hands. To all those in favor of the election of Omole Emmanuel Olu as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hands. To all those in favor of the election of Pujanya Olai Wolai Yusu as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. We are all those in favor of the election of Ade Lakum, Lukma Ade Shola, as a representative of the shareholders in the audit committee of the company, please signify by raising their right hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll Thank you for your patience. The scrutinize will next collate and verify the results after which will be announced. Of the voting announced, it is my pleasure to inform you that the directors have elected the following three members to represent the board of directors in the audit committee. They are Mr. Oluchoi, Oluchoi Bikestet, Mrs. Tupueko Mogui Okaru, MFR, and Mr. Stephen Simon. No picture. Sorry. And I have the results of the voting carried out a few minutes ago, and I announced the results of the election as follows. Is that all? That's all right. No results. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the audit committee results, Chief Timothy Ayobami Adesion, nine. First, Mazi. Samuel Mpamogu, 9, first. 
David Ogutoye, Nikan first. Thank you very much. All the others, Bakudaya, zero. No, no, zero, 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 right through it. I want to thank you. Following the elections, I now put the motion proper. Thank you very much. I therefore declare that the following members have been duly elected as representatives of the shareholders in the audit committee. They are Chief Timothy Adeshino, Mazim Kwamogu, and David Okutoye. Thank you very much. Following from the elections, I now put the motion proper to the meeting. I hereby move that the following shareholders representatives, Chief Timothy Adeshino, Mahazi Samuel Pamogo, Mr. David Ogutoye, as well as the following directors representatives, Mr. Uluche Uluche Pikestet, Mrs. Tufue Komogu Okaru MFR, Mr. Steve Simmer, B, and they are hereby elected as members of the audit committee. Will someone please rise and second this motion? Thank you very much. Again, two people seconded. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'm very gender, gender sensitive. Will all those in favor of this motion please signify by raising the admission cards in their right hand? Anyone objecting to the motion? Please do likewise by raising the admission card in their right hand. Nobody. I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. Thank you very much. Indeed. The next item on the agenda is to fix the remuneration of the director. Please be informed that, as required by the CAC guidelines, the approval of the Corporate Affairs Commission was obtained for this item, being a special business to be included as part of this of the agenda for this AGM. As this item concerns me once again, it is my pleasure to again call on the managing director CEO, Mr. Borubel, to chair this part of the proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In accordance with Article 77 of the Articles of Association of the Company, I hereby move that the remuneration of the directors in respect of the year ending 31st September 2020 be, and it is hereby fixed at 129 million 237,000 naira only. Would someone please rise and second the motion? Is there any questions before the motion to be put to the Okay, you can read it yeah. on the side. So the direct the no, is is written by the side. The figure is made up of the following. It's the director the sees four point seven million for the chairman and three point four for each other. Other emolument thirteen point four seven million for chairman and eighty four point twenty two for others. Same. The total amount actual for 2019 was 117.5 million. 
shown in note 9b, page 80 of the 2019 annual report and account. 2020 proposal is a 10% increase on that of the year. Is there any other questions for the motion? I now put the motion to the meeting. And I hereby direct that the vote be taken forthwith by the use of the voting device given on arrival. The independent auditor will act as a scrutineer. I now invite the registrar to conduct. Thank you. As usual, you press one, four, and two against. The poll opens now. Ten seconds. You still have right to vote. Two seconds, one second, poll closes. At the end of the voting, we had 217 people voting, four, three against. And in terms of number of shareholding, five billion, 471,995,504, representing 99.76% of shareholding voting voted for, while 30,414,100 shares representing 0.24% voted against. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, based on the results verified by the independent auditor, I hereby declare that the motion has been fully carried. That concludes my assignment, and I now call on the chairman to continue with the proceedings. Thank you very much, MD CEO. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my fellow shareholders, we have dealt with the former business, and I would like to thank you on behalf of the board for your continuing interest in the affairs of the, of the company. I enjoin each of us to please stay safe and follow all measures being put, being put in place by government to to stem the, the spread of the coronavirus. I now declare the meeting closed.